We are finishing up today our series on the Holy Spirit. That does not mean in any way that we are done talking about the Holy Spirit. I hope that this series has so far been an encouragement to you, a challenge to you, a blessing to you. Uh, but here's what we have on tap today. We have a theology application and prayer every week. Our theology today is this. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to every believer and gives them a place within the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to every believer and gives them a place in the body of Christ. Our application this week is we should seek to find and enjoy our place in the body of believers. We should seek to find and enjoy our place in the body of believers. And our prayer this week is, God, give us wisdom and boldness to serve you in the church. If you would, please turn to 1 Corinthians 12 or find it on your phone. 1 Corinthians 12, we will be in uh, this chapter and the subsequent two chapters for the rest of our time today. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. When we talk about spiritual gifts, uh, so our theology again being the Holy Spirit gives gifts to every believer and gives them a place in the body. When we talk about spiritual gifts, uh, it's fairly polarizing. If you've been around the church community, if you've been around church world for any length of time, uh, spiritual gifts can be polarizing. I don't know that it's quite as much as it was when I was growing up, but everybody, like I remember being part of our college ministry there in Lubbock. And I remember we probably, in the course of my four or five years there, we probably did like three different spiritual gifts tests. Anybody ever remember those? Did anybody ever take like a spiritual gifts test? And uh, and it's really interesting because it's a pretty narrow kind of test. I don't I don't know how accurate it really is, but like uh, everybody, you know, kind of like figured out, already knew what they were going to be, and you kind of, I don't know, it feels a little bit biased. It's all multiple choice, and you can kind of. If you, if you want to be a prophet this week and you want to be a preacher next week, you can, totally can. You, you know what the answers need to be, you know? And so, like a, so I don't know. Uh, spiritual gifts tests aren't necessarily bad. I just think that they're a little bit limiting. Now, when we talk about spiritual gifts, the Bible has four different distinct places that it actually talks about them. It talks about them here in 1 Corinthians 12. It talks about them in Romans 12. It talks about them in Ephesians 4. And talks about them in 1 Peter 4. So these are the kind of four texts uh, that people go to to talk about spiritual gifts. Usually people come to 1 Corinthians 12. We we as pastors here, Pierce, Micah, and myself, we do not believe that 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians 4, and 1 Peter 4 are the, the entire list of spiritual gifts. Nowhere does Paul say in any of his three letters, nowhere does Peter say in his one letter talking about spiritual gifts, nowhere does anyone say Uh, These are all the spiritual gifts. By the way, if you've never, ever heard a sermon about spiritual gifts, let me just stop right now. Let me just quit, begin again, and tell you what spiritual gifts are, okay? So, uh, because maybe some of you are like, man, I just, I don't know. I've never heard that term before. The the Bible tells us uh, that, that when we become believers, when we've put our faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit who lives in us gives us different abilities, gives us different things, strengths. And the Bible lists about, depending on how you count them, the Bible lists about 20 to 22 of those, okay? Or you might say 17 to 22 of those, depending on how you count them. And so preaching is a spiritual gift. It's, it is, uh, now, don't get me wrong, there are people who preach who probably shouldn't be preachers, okay? Um, but but there, is a, there is a preaching, so in every, in every example I'm about to give you, there is a human factor in it, and then there's a God factor in it. So one of the spiritual gifts that the Bible mentions is giving. We, we've all probably known somebody in our life who was just a giver, you know, who just was, they're just generous, right? But there is a spiritual gift of giving that is different than just normal kind of giving. Uh, there is a gift of faith. Now, this is really interesting because all of us who have ever put faith in Jesus, all of us who have ever become believers have put faith in Christ. And we say, God, we know that you sent your son to die for us and to be raised from the dead. And our faith is in him and in the empty tomb. Like that's faith. We all have faith, but there is a gift of faith. There, is a, there are people who operate. Uh, you, you've encountered maybe somebody who just seems to just trust God all the time and without fail or wavering and they just have this this powerful gift or it's something it's, it is it's a gift there are people who are encouragers there are people who are gifted at encouraging maybe you know somebody who is a pretty good encourager and then there are people who I think are spiritually biblically gifted with encouragement 
They're just good at it. I, I, I am, I've said several times before, I am a notorious pessimist. And, and I would not have been, I would not have survived 25 years in ministry if it wasn't for the people around me with the gift of encouragement. Like I just wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made it this far. There's a gift of teaching. There's a gift of teaching. These are people who are able to take a truth and unpackage it and then repackage it in a way that people can comprehend and understand. People who are wired to teach. This is a little bit different maybe than the preacher because the, the Greek word preacher, then the Latin word preacher really means to shepherd. It's more of a, a care kind of thing. So maybe the person on the stage is a really gifted teacher, but not a really gifted pastor, not really good at shepherding. Maybe there's somebody else who's really good at shepherding, the kind of person who's going to be weeping at the bedside of the person who's sick or those kinds of things, right? So there's a gift of mercy, somebody whose heart is just merciful. It's really interesting because there's also a gift of prophecy, and prophecy isn't primarily biblically predicting the future or what's going to happen biblically. The, the prophet was somebody who said, hey, you're in sin, and hey, here's what holiness is, and here's what you should be living like. Usually, you don't find somebody who's gifted with prophecy, also gifted with mercy. Like, they're just, because the prophet's going, hey, that's sin. You need to quit behaving that way. And the person who's merciful is like, look, come here, you sweet broken lamb, you know, like that. And, and so, when the prophet has confronted you and said, listen, you shouldn't be living like that, run to the person who's gifted with mercy, right? And say, listen, they were mean to me, you know, or whatever, you know, like... So, so all of these are things, these are all examples of things that uh, are spiritually gifted to us, okay? And I promise you, if you're a person of faith, that one of these things is something that has been gifted to you. Now, I told you a minute ago that, that when I was growing up, there was a lot of controversy over spiritual gifts. And if we stop right here, you'd be like, why? Why is there any controversy over any of that? The controversy comes in with some of the spiritual gifts that are like tongues. And so speaking in tongues is something that maybe you've never been around, maybe you have been around, but speaking in tongues is speaking in another language, and it's implied from 1 Corinthians 13, which we can talk more about Wednesday, but it's implied from 1 Corinthians 13 that there are foreign languages, like, like sometimes someone just speaks in a language that they haven't previously been able to speak in. Uh, there's a, a friend of mine who was a missionary in Indonesia, and instead of doing his two years of training, he picked up the language in two days. In two days, he picked up the language and went into these places and was preaching Christ. And you go, man, that's just God. Like, how does someone get a language in two days? Like, it doesn't happen. Like, God enabled this person to go and preach, right? There's also, according to 1 Corinthians 13, the gift of, uh, of the tongues of angels. There is a, a heavenly language. That, and we just go, man, what is that? What's that all about? And so some people, like... All the churches I grew up in, I grew up in a Baptist church like for my whole life, basically. Baptist churches were like, man, there are no such thing as tongues anymore. They don't exist. We were all scared of them. Like, we didn't, like, it was just taboo. You can't, no, there's no such thing as tongues. Well, why? Uh, we just don't talk about that. You know, that's, that's about as far as it ever got. Uh, gift of healings. The gift of healings is a spiritual gift. And people go, well, but that doesn't really happen anymore. But it does, Okay. And, and so we can talk more about that. I'd love to talk in depth about some of these things on Wednesday night at Bible study if you want to come. Uh, we will find a way to fit you in the house, okay? But these are the kinds of things people go, well, speaking in tongues, sorry, uh, with speaking in tongues, there's another gift called interpretation of tongues. So somebody might be speaking in a language, but they might not understand what that language means. And somebody else goes, oh, I know that language. And they're able to then say, here's what he's saying or here's what she's saying. Uh, and then the gift of healings. And so these are kinds of things that, these are the ones that are controversial. And it's where the church, not just our group, but historically the church, where they've been divided. And so you have some people who call themselves cessationists, and they say the gifts are done. And it's interesting because they only mean three. They only mean three gifts are done. Uh, and, and then you have other people who, who only talk about those three gifts. Like that's, their, that's the only thing they think about. So I'm going to hopefully blow your mind a little bit here. Sometimes people will say this. They'll say, well, we don't believe in the supernatural gifts anymore. We don't believe in the gifts of tongues, interpretation of tongues, or healings. We don't believe in those gifts anymore. But we believe in the other gifts, preaching and teaching and compassion and mercy and encouragement and giving. We believe in hospitality and service. We believe in those gifts. Here's why people have divided that. Think about it for a minute. We all know somebody who who isn't a believer, who doesn't profess in Christ, who's merciful. We all know somebody who maybe doesn't believe in Christ, who's generous with their time or their money, right? Uh, 
We know people who don't believe in Christ who are encouraging. And so in our minds, we think this category of gifts isn't supernatural. But tongues and interpretation of tongues and healings are supernatural. Now, here's where I'm going to blow your mind. In 1 Corinthians 12, it calls each one of these gifts, each one of them is a charisma. Each one is charisma. Each one is empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Each one is empowered by the Spirit of God, meaning that if you have the gift of mercy, if not just that you're generally a merciful person, if you have the gift of mercy, it is a supernatural, spiritual gift empowered by God. And, and, and so all of these gifts are spiritual gifts. All of these gifts are supernatural gifts. All of these gifts are empowered by God. There, there, there are some people who, as preachers or teachers, there are some people who are as encouragers. There are some people as, have you ever known like somebody just, like one of the gifts that we didn't talk about is hospitality. I just alluded to it, but like people who just like their home is everybody's home. Like, just come into my home, come into my space. Some people are gifted uh, with um, uh, service. They just, they, it is just their nature. They are going to serve. They're going to lay their lives down for somebody else. These are supernatural giftings. These are things that are empowered by the Holy Spirit. So I don't want you in your mind to think of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and healings as over here, and then mercy and kindness and giving and encouragement as over here in two separate categories, because they are all under the heading of the Greek word charisma. They are all under the heading of supernatural gifts. These are all empowered by God, okay? So that being said, all of these gifts that are empowered by God, and we don't know we don't know what gifts are all empowered by God because none of these writers ever said, hey, here's the whole list. But, but look at chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to serve mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are different types of gifts. There are different types of charismas, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of services, but the same Lord, and there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. So catch this. This is one of those beautiful Trinitarian texts where it mentions the Spirit and the Son and the Father, and it says there in verse 4, there are different types of gifts. But there's one spirit. There are different ways. There are different services. There are different ways for those gifts to be utilized. But there is one Lord. And then uh, there are different types of activities, but it is God who empowers them all and everyone. And look at verse 7. To each, that's to each person, each part of the body, each individual, is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. If you're somebody who writes in your Bible, and I don't think biblically there's anything wrong with it, but if you have an aversion to that, you know, whatever, or they're on your phone, highlight for the common good. This is for everybody. This is for the benefit of the body. This is for the benefit of everyone. This is for the benefit of us all. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of the wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by one Spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who gives to each one individually as he wills. Why do you have the spiritual gift or gifts that you have today? Why do you have the, the Spirit gives them to you as He wills? Now, this is something that I wasn't taught growing up. I was taught growing up, you have a gift. You might have a secondary or a third kind of side kind of gift. Uh, but I was always taught, like, if this is your gift, this is always your gift. I don't know that the Bible teaches that. I, I really look at verse 11 here, and, and it says that the Holy Spirit gives gifts as He wills. So, like... I don't know what your gifting is today, but if the Holy Spirit wills, he changes it tomorrow. It's his prerogative. But the reason that the Holy Spirit gives gifts is very clear in verse 7. And the reason that he gives gifts is for the common good. All right? One of the biggest mistakes, so can I just say something to you? And, and I'm not trying to be offensive, and I'm not trying to, like, bash anybody's background. Remember, I grew up in a Baptist background where, like, you just... Tongues wasn't a thing you talked about. Healings was not a thing you talked about. Like, it doesn't exist. I have other friends who have come from a more charismatic background, which is really interesting that we call that charismatic. That's the point I wanted to make. We, we call them, well, they're the charismatics. 
We call people who speak in tongues or interpret tongues or have healings charismatics. And yet every gift is a charismatic gift. All of them. All of them are the charisma. All of them are. Anyway, it just kind of ticks me off. <laughs> if somebody asks, if, just, just to mess with people, it's okay to do that sometimes. If somebody asks, what kind of church do you go to? And, and you're, they're talking about us here. Tell them a charismatic one. Because, because we believe that who we are is empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that the life we li- live, the marriages we have, the kids we raise is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that is charismatic, let me just tell you. Like, j- just mess with them. And they're like, oh, I didn't know. You know? Be like, I know. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? You know? We're a charismatic church. Well, what kind of things do you do there? Well, we talk about Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Like, just, just mess with people. Like, just go to lunch today, find the rest of the church crowds, and just mess with them just a little bit in love and in grace. But, you know, like, mess with them. So, so we, I, I grew up being taught, you avoid these three gifts. I have other friends who were like, hey, these three gifts are the only ones that matter. And both extremes, as is often the case, are wrong. Because the truth is that all the gifts are given for the common good. All of them. And, and let, me, let me highlight one of the biggest problems I saw in the churches that I grew up in. In, in a lot of the churches that I, I grew up in, the, the teaching pastor, what most people call the preacher, right? Like me, my role kind of guy, the guy here. Most of those guys treated their church like they were a company and that they were the CEO. You ever been around the church like that? There might be several pastors on staff, but the guy at the top, he's the boss. And he's the one that's in charge, and he's the one that's going to determine. It's interesting to me because essentially what that guy is saying is, my gift at pastor is bigger than all of your gifts. And that's ridiculous. We need all the gifts for us to be a healthy body of believers. And if I stand here on the stage and say, and I don't know that I have the gift of pastoring personally, I I think I probably lean more towards teacher, but but if, if, if I say, well, I'm the guy on the stage... I'm the teaching pastor, and I look down on you, then as we're getting ready to be seeing here in 1 Corinthians 12, I am basically saying, I don't need your gifts. And if you show up here on Sunday and you say, well, I'm going to see what Ryan's going to say this week. I'm going to hear from the pastor. And you forget that you also have been gifted, then you're cheating us. Like, this is a team effort. This is a group effort, right? Like, I'm, I'm the guy giving the pep talk, but... Like us, together, we're the ones doing the work. Your gifting is needed. Listen to me. I I, I try to be gracious. Micah tells me I'm more gracious than I think I am. But if you come to me and you've made shipwreck of your life, I'm going to look you in the face and say, man, you've made shipwreck of your life. You really screwed this up. And then I'm going to tell you God is bigger than your screw-ups and we can fix it. But I'm going to be very matter-of-fact. And here's some things that you can do, and here's what you need to do, and we need to deal with this right now. And Michelle's going to be sitting on the couch next to me crying and going, I am so sorry. <laughs> and she's not apologizing for me. She's broken for you, right? Maybe she's apologizing for me. <laughs> but, but listen, like, you, you, need, you need the Michelles in your life. You need the, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you need the teacher, but you also need the giver. You need the person, like, I'm, I'm terrible at hospitality. I, I, I am an introvert. Like, it... Like this right here, I am way more comfortable up here than talking to you after church. I don't know what to say to you afterwards. I, I don't know how to have small talk, right? That is not my gift. Like I, I kind of like, I, what I'll do, pay attention. What I'll do is I'll kind of come into a group that's already talking and just hang out on the edge so it looks like I'm part of it. That way it's not my responsibility. I, hey, the weather's nice today, isn't it? You know, like... <laughs> We had chicken for dinner. You know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm terrible at that. I have other people who are just hospitable. I'm working on it. I am working on having people into my home and being more outgoing. But I am bad at it. Like, I just, I like my world. I like my space. I like my bubble. And I like my corner. Can I just be in my corner? And You know what I mean? Like, but we need people who are gifted with hospitality. I've told you the story, and bears repeating that I had a buddy who, who a few years ago died of brain cancer, but... Before he died, richest, most generous person I've ever known. And I told you the story of where he flew five of us as pastors from all over the nation to Indonesia to hold pastors' conferences there. And he rented out an entire hotel in Indonesia. 
the entire thing for these 250 Indonesian pastors to come to, had the entire thing catered for a week. And we were on one island in Indonesia. And after we had done that for a week, we flew to another island where he had rented out another hotel and catered another uh, set of food for another 250 pastors for another week. And it was just on his dime because that's just, he was like, man, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher, but you guys are. I've got the money. And he was just giving He was the guy that I told you as we were coming down, we were making our descent in Indonesia. He had been sitting in another seat. He came over and sat beside me, and he goes, hey, open up your shirt, which is always a weird thing to be told on an airplane. (laughs) It's only happened to me five times, and every time, no, I'm just kidding, just this once. And he goes, open up your shirt. And I felt like I was in a movie. He hands me $25,000 in cash, saran wrapped in a brick, And he goes, and he hands me a box of saran wrap. And he goes, you want to break this into smaller things and tuck it in your pants for when we go through customs. I was like, wait, what? (laughs) And he goes, he goes, they'll take it from you. In Indonesia, they will, they will take your money. They'll rob us. And he goes, you can, and he goes, I always get stopped. You won't get stopped. You're a kid. You look good. You know, you'll be fine. He goes, I always get stopped. And he goes, put this money in your pants. I was like, what is this money for? He goes, he goes, we're going to give it to all the pastors in the churches that we meet over the next few weeks. And I was like, okay. (laughs) Out of everybody who got stopped that day, guess who it was? Me. I had $25,000. I had this weird bulge. And they're interviewing me and interrogating me. And I'm like, "Ah, hey, just sweating. We finally make it through customs. I look at the guy and I'm like, do you want your money back? He goes, no, no, no. It's yours. You give it away as God leads you. Like, I can't do that. I got 20 bucks for you. You need 20 bucks today, I can cover you, but only like the first five that ask. That's just where I'm at. This dude, he was a giver. It was just, he was gifted that way. You ever know people like that? Don't we need people like that? You understand that this room that you're sitting in right now, that this church, that this church had been empty for two years and that this property was given to us so that we could sit here and do this. It was given to us. And it was so run down that the money it took to rebuild this or to finish it out, that money was given to us by two churches in town and three separate families. Gifted to us. Don't we need people like that? Some of you don't have kids in youth, but you're givers. And there will be a kid who goes to camp this summer because you're a giver. Don't we need that? Don't, don't miss this. Your gifting, your strength is needed. I just need to go ahead and tell you something right now because you're going to want to ask. You're going to be like, well, where do we stand on tongues as a church? All for it. I've been praying for the gift of tongues for 20 years. As of yet, the Holy Spirit has not felt like I need it. And, and probably, I'd probably have too much pride about it, to be honest. I'd be like, this is awesome. You know, I'd pray for one of my kids to have the interpretation of it because that would just be wacky and cool. <laughs> I just need you to know, though, that gift is welcome here. But we also hold to 1 Corinthians 14 that if there's a speaking in a tongue, there needs to be an interpretation of a tongue. And you also need to know that I know the Bible pretty well. So if what's said doesn't line up with the scripture, I will call you out. Because I kind of lean towards prophet. Michelle will be merciful to you, me less so. You know? Guys, we need each other. If you show up here on Sunday and right now you're just at this place where maybe you're just broken and you're just spent and you're exhausted, good. Come here and just rest. But if you're here and you're like, this is my family, this is my church, then, then we need you to begin to do the things that God has gifted you to do so that we can be healthy. So that we can, so that we can continue to function well. So that we can, anyway, the Spirit gives us these gifts as He sees fit. Look at this. Look at verse 18. Jump down to verse 18. As it is, God has arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. Now, we here at the 456 in Dove Creek, we are a particular body of believers, and there are about another 100 body of believers in San Angelo. But the church universal, every believer across the world is part of one family. But we still are going to operate as our own group. And you have been placed here by God with the gifts that God has given you for this to function well. 
we have volunteers. We have people who come and help out at the coffee bar, who guard, or I don't know if you know this. Some people didn't know this, but we, we have people uh, stationed at doors usually during the services who are packing, right? Like uh, it, it was a, um, you remember a couple of years ago, the church in Sutherland Springs um, that the gunman walked into. Th- those were all my friends. Um, I used to go to that church, preach there. Um, and, and so we were just like, man, we just, we need security. We have people who want to serve that way. We have people who want to make a baked good and bring it in like, and they're like, man, I can't do much for the church. I don't have a lot of money. And we're like, yeah, but you're, you're providing a baked good every week. Like that, you're, that's your heart, right? Like we, we need all of us for this to function. And I don't want you to ever think, hear me, if, if you go, oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just good at encouraging. I'm not good. Do not do that to yourself. Do not dismiss the gift that God has given you by the power of the Holy Spirit and say, well, I'm not a preacher, teacher. I'm just an encourager. Oh, my goodness. Hear me say this. The the 25 years of my preaching would have ended at year five if not for the encouragers in my life. I'd have been done because I am painfully insecure, and I hate myself 99 days out of 100, you know, and, like, it's the encouragers that keep me going, right? Right? If it wasn't the guys like my buddy who took me to Indonesia who said, hey, do you, you and your wife doing okay this month? Y'all have enough? And I'm like, well, we're okay. And he was like, well, here, 10 grand. Like, you, uh, 500 would have done it. Yeah, but this will be okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't get to keep doing this. You are needed, and you are part of the kingdom of God and the family of God. You're part of it. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to every believer and then finds a place for them in the body. And if this is the place that you want to call home, we are glad to have you, but you're part of us now. And if after this week you're like, man, I'm done. I didn't know that they felt that way about tongues, and you need to go to another church, that's okay too. That's okay. But you don't get to land there passively. When you land in that body of believers, you have still been gifted by God with a gift, and he has still placed you there for the purpose of the whole good, for everybody. We, we don't need a lot of other teachers and preachers right now. We do need people with mercy and kindness and compassion. Listen to this. Let me show you something. Look at verse 14. The body does not consist of one member, but many. That just He's talking like literally here, like our physical bodies aren't one part. They're many parts. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where is the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God has arranged the members in the body, each one as he chose. Listen to me. I do not think that because I'm the preacher teacher guy that I have any more weight in this building than you do. I'm a part of the body. I have a function here. Okay? I have a function here. Um, none of you are the appendix, right? Like the appendix, this weird thing that apparently is unnecessary. Like none of you are the appendix. Now you might be the pinky toe, but but let's Let's just be really honest. The pinky toe is really important in the middle of the night in the dark when you're trying to go to the kitchen and you catch it on the edge of the table. The the pinky toe has some significance to it, you know? Right? All of the parts in the body serve in a certain way. I'm right-handed. You cannot see anything on this finger, but when we were... um, When the blizzard was happening, we were living by our fireplace. One day, I burned this finger. And it wasn't even bad. I was stirring it up, and an ember landed on my finger, burned it just a little bit. I have done it, that did something to the nerves there because now, like any time I touch it at all, like barely touch it, it feels like my whole finger's burning, and that's a little bit irritating for a right-handed writer, painter kind of person eater. Like I mean, just it hurts. It just hurts all the time, you know. And you would go, yeah, but your finger's not as important as, like, say, your heart is. Okay, maybe. But my heart's not giving me any problems right now. My finger is. What, what I want you to know is this. That no part of the body should say, I'm not that part of the body, therefore I don't have any value. You have value. 
Who you are right now as a follower of Christ has value. And the Spirit has gifted you and strengthened you for a certain task that maybe we as pastors right now are completely unaware of. But you have a place here. You have a purpose here. You have an intent here that the Holy Spirit has given you. Jump down to verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. And the head cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor honor to the part that lacked it, uh, that there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same care for one another. If one part suffers, all suffer. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. We're a body. We're a family, you and I. If you've chosen for this to be the place that you want to hang out, you're part of us, and we are glad to have you. People will ask, well, what do you do about membership? We don't really have membership. If you're here, you're part of us. And if you're here one week out of every six, you're part of us. If this is the place you're coming, you're our family, and we love you and we care for you. But I need you to know that we also need you. You're needed. What God has equipped you with through the power of the Holy Spirit, he's equipped you with for our good. For our good. Too many times in our culture, people have determined whether the church rises or falls based off their head pastor. Listen to me. I'm going, uh, my family and I are going away for a couple of days on spring break to visit my mom and her husband in a new place they bought. And we're going to go fishing and kayaking for a couple of days. And if something happens, right, something happens, weird kayak accident, the kayaks collide and explode and there's fire and death and it's terrible. And I don't come back. Hear me say this. If I don't come back and the church dies, you weren't doing your part. I don't hold this thing together. I'm not the glue. Now, I, I joke often with Pierce and Micah that both of them can do my job, but I can't do any of theirs. So if they die, we're in real trouble. <laughs> but I'm not the glue. How many times, how many times have people given a claim to a church or dishonored a church because of the pastor on the stage? That just tells me right there that the pastor has way too much weight in the system. I'm just part of the family. I am up here because I go insane a little bit if I don't get to teach and preach. I have to teach and preach. Like, it's in me. I'm a little bit like what Paul says is, woe is me if I do not preach. I am compelled to preach. I have to. I get itchy if I don't. But your gift, what the Spirit has put in you, we need that to round us out. I'm just the voice, but we need the hands and the feet and the muscles and the heart, you know? We, We need you guys. And that brings us to our application. We should seek to find and enjoy our place in the body of believers. Here's what I would encourage you to do. Don't be passive. Again, I'm going to put an asterisk on that. If you're coming from a place where you're just now coming to Christ, you're just now learning about the church, or you're broken, or you're hurt, or you're just kind of weary right now, okay, take a beat. Let us just minister to you. Let us just serve you. Let us just provide some comfort and some healing for you. But if you're here and you're like, man, this is my family. I am not telling you, you should do this. You should operate in your gifts. I am telling you, we need you to. There's a difference. The difference is the you should comes from an authoritative place, but the we need comes from a holistic body place. We need you. We need who you are to be part of who we are so that we can function well. We need that. The Holy Spirit, who is God, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. The Holy Spirit, who gives power and wisdom. The Holy Spirit, who, who 
we talked about last week, uh, teaches us and, and, and seals us in Christ and marks us as followers of God. The Holy Spirit has gifted us so that the body of Christ could be an equipped bride, could be an equipped body, bringing glory to the name of Jesus in everything we're doing. We are a family. We are a body. We are a church. We are a building. We're like this thing here, this, this isn't, and you've heard this, this building isn't the church. This isn't, it's where we gather and it's convenient, but who you and I are, we're the church. And you absolutely 100% have gifts that have been given to you and empowered by the Holy Spirit. You do. And you shouldn't ever be embarrassed that your gift isn't their gift. You should rejoice and that God has gifted you. And you go, man, quit. Can we just quit? Like, can we just quit being like me? Like just negative all the time, you know, or whatever. Can we, can we just quit going, but I'm not like that. And can we just quit doing that and start saying, but here's who I am. Here's who the spirit of God has made me to be. You are needed. You are needed in this place. We have a home for you here. We have a place for you here. The Spirit of God has gifted you as he sees fit, and God has placed you in the body as he sees fit. You are not here today or any day by accident or by chance. And so here's our prayer today is this. God, give us wisdom and boldness to serve you in this church or in the church. This might not be your home. You might need to go somewhere else, and that's okay. We'd love to have you here. We love that you've been coming. But if this isn't your home, that's okay. But God, give us wisdom and boldness to serve you in the church. And maybe it's the Pentecostal church. And maybe it's the Baptist church. And maybe it's whatever. But every church you go through, every, every church whose doors you walk through is a charismatic church. And I mean that because every church you go to is still empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let's take a moment, can we? Just pray, God, give us wisdom and boldness to serve you in the church. God, give us wisdom and boldness to serve you in the church. Lord God, I thank you that none of us who have put faith in Christ are lacking in gifts. We have them. We've been blessed with them. We've been endowed with gifts by the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for that. I thank you, God, that all of us who have named the name of Jesus have been given gifts according to the Spirit's will. We've been placed in the body according to God's discernment and power. And that whatever gift we have, mercy, service, hospitality, tongues, preaching, teaching, and uh, administration, whatever gift we have has been, is a, is, a, is a charismatic gift empowered by you for the good of all. Help us to be servants to one another. Help us to have the frame of reference and the mindset, Lord, that we would be part of this family and part of this body for your good, for our good, to build up and equip one another. God, give us boldness, boldness to move from a place of passivity to a place of action. God, to find ways to utilize those things that you've entrusted to us so that this body can be whole and healthy. Take just a moment right where you are. Maybe, maybe you're not sure how God has gifted you. Would you take just a moment and just say, God, show me. Show me my, what my gifts and strengths are so that I can be used in this body of believers. Take a moment to pray that, would you?